Hello everyone. Today we are looking into the, another chapter which is distributing and promoting product. This chapter deals with the third and fourth elements in the marketing mix, which are distribution and promoting products. In this chapter, we will look at the concept of place, the distribution mix, and also the different channels of distribution. We will also be looking at promotions and we discuss some of the consideration when selecting a promotion mix. Lastly, we're going to discuss the tasks involved in personal selling and also the various types of sales promotion. First things first, we are going to look at the distribution mix. For businesses, in addition to have a good product mix and also effective pricing, the success of any product also depends on its distribution mix. Distribution mix can be defined as the combination of distribution channels by which a firm gets products to end users. In US alone, there are more than 2 million companies created to help move product from producers all the way to the customers. It goes the same for a lot of countries all over the world. And many of these firms own stores in which consumers purchase directly from them. When we look at intermediaries and distribution channel, we normally call intermediaries as middlemen. Intermediaries help to distribute goods either by moving them or providing information that stimulates their movement from sellers to customers. They provide a link between the producers to the users. We can separate intermediaries into wholesalers and also retailers. This one here, wholesalers and also retailers. Wholesalers are intermediaries who sell product to other businesses for resale to final customers, whereas retailers sell directly to the customers. A distribution channel is the path that a product follows from producers to end users. There are four channels of distribution. The first one is the direct channel, second is retail distribution, third is wholesale distribution, Lastly, you can distribute by using agents or brokers. We're going to look at this deeper. The first channel is the direct channel. In direct channel, this is actually a distribution channel in which a product travels from producers all the way to the customers without any intermediaries. Avon, Dell, Tupperware, they all implement the system. You can buy their products online and they will send directly to your house. The next one is the retail distribution. For retail distribution, producers will distribute consumer products through retailers. If you buy car tire from Goodyear or Continental, you are actually buying tire from retailers, not the producers. You may also buy some products online from other online stores, not directly from the producers. If you go and buy from Alibaba or Shopee, most probably you are buying from retailers. The third one is called as the wholesale distribution. For wholesale distribution, this channel requires a large and costly amount of floor space to store and display merchandise. Normally, wholesalers will buy large amount of quantity of products from producers and sell them back to retailers and for some profit. Retailers will then do the final task which is the selling of the product directly to the customers, normally in a single unit sales. The last channel is what we call as the distribution by agents or brokers. Sales agents or brokers, they represent producers and they receive commission on the goods that they sell to customers or even industrial users. Sales agents such as online travel agents generally deal in the related product lines of few producers to meet the needs of many customers. This is actually the additional notes, the one that I've covered just now. We talk about this uh, direct channel. You can please take some time to read through these notes. We also have talked about retail distribution. Um, we also have talked about wholesale distribution. Just now, again, please pause and read some of these notes here. We also have discussed about distribution by agents or brokers. And then here, the notes actually uh, add on a little bit more on sales agents and also brokers itself. The next part looks at the value-adding intermediaries. 
Intermediaries can provide added value by providing time-saving information and also making the right quantities of product available where and when customers need them. Let's take an example of a simple intermediary, which is supermarket. This figure shows you the problem of making a food without the benefit of supermarket as the intermediaries. As a customer, you would obviously spend more time, more money and energy to try and gather all the ingredients from separate producers. Whereas when we have uh, intermediaries like supermarket here, it is actually easier for you. You can go to this intermediary and, go and get all of your ingredients from one single intermediary. This part discuss about the distribution strategies. Selecting an appropriate distribution network is a strategic decision. It will determine the amount of and cost of market coverage your product will get. It will also determine how many types or layers of intermediaries you will need to use. Generally, the selection depends on the type of the products and also how much market coverage is most effective to get your product to the highest numbers of customers. Hence, we have three strategies of distribution for us to choose from. Firstly, we can use the intensive distribution strategy. Intensive distribution means distributing through as many channels and channel members as possible. We look at both wholesaler and retailers. It is normally used for low cost consumer goods with widespread appeal, um, such as candies or magazines. M&M candies enter the market through all suitable retail outlets, supermarket, candy machine, 7-Eleven, online, and so forth. The next strategy is the exclusive distribution strategy. With exclusive distribution, a manufacturer grants the exclusive right to distribute or sell a product to a limited number of wholesalers or retailers, usually in a given geographic area. Such agreements are most common for high-cost prestige products. Rolex watch are sold only by official Rolex jewelers. The last strategy is called as selective distribution. Using selective distribution, a producer select only wholesalers and retailers that will give them a special attention in their sales effort, in display and also promotional advantage and maybe some others. Selective distribution is most often used for consumer products such as furniture and appliances. Now we move on to wholesaling. If you recall, wholesalers, they provide services to buyers of product, normally for resale or business use. There are four types of intermediaries or wholesalers. The first one is the merchant wholesalers. The second one is the full service merchant wholesalers. The third one is limited function merchant wholesalers. And lastly, dropshippers. Wholesalers normally, they help they give benefit by storing products. They also will assist in offering delivery. They can also offer credit payment. And lastly, they can help you by providing product information. Now, different wholesalers have different services. And all of these services depends on the type of the intermediaries that you choose. We're going to look at the types of wholesalers itself. Most wholesalers are actually independent operations that sell various consumers or business goods produced by a variety of manufacturers. The largest group, the merchant wholesalers, buy products from manufacturers and sell them to other businesses. They own the goods and they resell and usually provide storage and delivery. For full-time merchant wholesalers, and there's about 80% of all merchant wholesalers, they provide value adding services including credit marketing advice and also merchandising services now we're going to look at limited function merchant wholesalers limited function merchant wholesalers they provide fewer services sometimes only storage customers are normally small operation that pay cash and pick up their own goods drop shippers drop shippers they don't even carry inventory or handle product they take orders from customers, they negotiate with producers to supply the goods, they take title to them and arrange for shipment. Now we're going to focus on retail outlets, specifically the types of brick and mortar retail outlets. Retailers are the final link between producers and also customers. They may buy goods from either wholesalers or producers itself. 
they sell not only goods but they also sell services such as auto repair, haircuts and dry cleaning. An independent retailer is a firm that operates only one retail outlet. Approximately three-fourths of retailers all over the world are actually independent retailers. A chain retailer is a firm that operates more than one retail outlet. Let's take a look at the different types of brick and mortar retail outlet. Retailers that features broad product lines include department stores, which are organized into specialized departments like shoes, furniture, appliances, family apparels, and so on. Stores are usually large. They handle wide range of goods. They offer variety of services such as credit plans and delivery. Similarly, supermarkets are also divided into departments of related products, food products, household products, and so forth. They focus on low price, self-service, and also wide selection. We normally know them as one-stop shopping for household needs. In contrast, specialty stores such as Leeds. Leeds is a retailer with more than 1,000 stores selling athletic fashion headwear. They serve specific market segments with full product lines in a narrow product field and often features knowledgeable sales personnel. We also have bargain retailers. Bargain retailers carry a wide range of products at low prices. And then we have discount houses. Discount houses began by selling large number of items at a significant price reduction to cash only customers. As name brand items become more common, they offer better product assortment while still transaction cash only sales in low rent facilities. As they become firmly, firmly entrenched, they begin to move to better locations. They improve the decor. They sell better quality merchandise at higher prices and offering services such as credit plan and non-cash sales. Catalog showroom mails catalogs to attract customers into showrooms to view display samples. They can place orders and they can also wait briefly while clerks retrieve orders from attached warehouses. We also have factory outlets. Factory outlets are manufacturers' own stores that avoid wholesalers and also retailers by selling merchandise directly from factory to customers. Next is, next is the wholesale club. Wholesale clubs such as Costco, they work by offering large discount on a wide range of brand name merchandise to customers who only pay annual membership fees. We also have convenience stores. Convenience stores chains such as 7-Eleven, Family Mart and 99 Speed Mart, they stress easily accessible locations. They also extend store hours and they also have a very speedy service. They differ from most bargain retailers in that they do not feature low prices. Some retailers, they sell product without brick and mortar stores. This is what we call as non-store retailing. Certain products like soft drink, or bottled mineral water, or even snacks can be sold using just vending machines, not necessarily stores. Again, this is what we call as non-store retailing. Non-store re retailing also include direct response retailing, in which firms contact customers directly to inform them about products and also to receive sales order. Mail order or also called as catalog marketing, is a popular form of direct response retailing. It is done by having an organization to provide a catalog from which customers make selection and place orders by mail or maybe by telephone or also on the internet itself. The less popular in recent years is actually telemarketing. Telemarketing happens by using phone calls to sell directly to customers. We also have direct selling. Direct selling is the marketing of products to customers through face-to-face -face sales presentation at home or maybe even at the workplace itself. Online retailing. Online retailing allows sellers to inform, to sell to and also to distribute to customers by using the web. For e-catalog, e-catalog use online displays of product to give millions of retailers and also business customers instant access to product information. The seller avoid mail distribution and also printing costs. 
and once an online catalog is in place, there is little cost in maintaining or even accessing it. About 90% of all catalogs are now on the internet itself, with sales through website accounting for more than 50% of all catalog sales. An important thing that we should know is electronic storefront. Each seller's website is an electronic storefront or virtual storefront. Websites or electronic storefronts allow shoppers to collect information about products and buying opportunities. They can also place orders and they can directly pay for the purchases itself. Products of large product lines such as Dell, they dedicate their own electronic storefront to their own product lines. Search engines such as Yahoo, Google and Ask serve as cyber malls. Cyber malls are the collection of virtual storefronts representing diverse product and offering speed, convenience, 24-hour access, and also efficient searching. We also have another method which is video retailing. Video retailing allow viewers at home to shop at home from channels of their own televisions. Next part, we move on to physical distribution. Physical distribution refers to the activities needed to move products from an intermediary or a manufacturer to customers and they include warehousing and also transportation operations. Its purpose is to make goods available when and where customers want them. They are also supposed to keep costs low and they provide service to satisfy customers. Because of its importance for customer satisfaction, some firms have even adopted distribution as part of their marketing strategy of choice. Storing or warehousing is a major part of distribution management. In selecting a strategy, managers must keep in mind both the different characteristics and also the cost of warehousing operations. If you look at private warehouse, private warehouse are owned by a single manufacturer, wholesaler or even retailers that deals in mass quantities and they always require regular storage. Most of these private warehouse are run by large firms. JCPenney, for example, maintains its own warehouses to facilitate the movement of product to its retail stores. Independently owned and operated public warehouse rent to companies only the space that they need. Public warehouse are popular with firms needing storage only during peak period and with manufacturers who need multiple storage locations to get products to multiple warehouse. We also need to look at promotions. Promotions refers to techniques for communicating information about products and this is actually part of the communication mix. Communication mix is the total message any company send to the customers about their product. Promotional techniques, especially advertising, must communicate the users, the features, the benefits of the products and also marketers use variety of tools for this purpose. Positioning is the process of establishing an easily identifiable product image in the minds of the customers by fixing, adapting, and communicating the nature of the product itself. First, a firm must identify which market segments are likely to purchase its product and how its product measures up against their competitors. Then, the firm will focus on promotional choices for, to differentiate its product and position them in the minds of the target audience. And as an example, when I say the word coffee, most of us would directly respond by, by Nescafe. And if I say the word the ultimate driving machine, we might respond by saying BMW. These associations are indicative of successful positioning. If marketing teams are clear of their objectives, they would normally consider two strategies to achieve them. We call this as push and also pull strategy. A pull strategy, they appeal directly to customers who will demand the product from retailers. Pharmaceutical companies normally they use direct to consumer advertising to persuade customers to aggressively request a product rather than to wait passively until the doctor suggests to try it. Using a push strategy, a firm markets their product to wholesalers and retailers who then persuade customers to buy it. The next part is advertising. Advertising is a paid 
non-personal communication by which an identified sponsor informs the whole audience about their product. We are quite used to advertising as it is everywhere around us. People use multiple ways to advertise like billboard, newspaper, sponsored ads and also others. Marketers use several different advertising media. Advertising media are specific communication devices to carry a seller's message to potential customers. The combination of media in which a company advertises is what we call as the media mix. We also have to look at personal selling. Personal selling is the oldest and most expensive form of sales. In personal selling, a salesperson communicate one-on-one -on -one with potential customers to identify their needs and also to align them with the product itself. Salesperson gain credibility by investing a lot of their time to get familiar with potential customers and answer their questions. This professional interaction is especially effective in relationship marketing. It gives the seller a clearer picture of the buyer's decision and also it allows salesperson to provide buyers with value-adding services. Retail selling is selling a consumer product for the buyer's personal or household use. Industrial selling, for industrial selling, it is selling products to other businesses either for the purpose of manufacturing or for resale itself. Salesperson must be skillful at performing three basic tasks of personal selling. The first one in, is order processing. In order processing, a salesperson receive an order and make sure that they handle the delivery itself. Uh, route salesperson. This is a person who calls on regular customers to check their inventories. They are often order processors. With the customer's consent, they can decide on the size of reorders. They would fill them directly from their trucks and even stock shelves. In other situations, however, a potential customers are not aware that they want or need a product. Hence, creative selling is important. Creative selling involves providing information and also demonstrate product benefits to persuade buyers to complete a purchase. Creative selling is crucial for industrial products and also high priced consumer products such as cars or for which buyers compare shops itself. Finally, a salesperson may use missionary selling to promote a company and also their products rather than simply to close a sale. Pharmaceutical companies often use this method to make doctors aware of the company and also their product so that they will recommend the company's product to others. Also, maybe the doctor will prescribe the products itself to the patients. Perhaps the most complex and challenging of these three sales tasks is creative selling. The creative salesperson is responsible to start and follow through on most of the steps in the personal selling process, which includes Prospect, prospecting, qualifying, and also closing. The next thing that we're going to learn today is the sales promotion. Sales promotion are short-term promotional activities designed to encourage consumer buying, industrial sales, or even cooperation from distributors itself. They can increase the likelihood that the buyers will try the product. They can also in enhance product recognition. They can increase uh, purchase size and also ultimately increase sales revenue. Most customers like us have taken part in a variety of sales promotion such as maybe free samples which let, let us try the product without risk or even coupons, coupon promotion. This coupon promotion uses certificate entitling buyers to discount to encourage customers to try new products. We want to take them away from the competitors and also induce them to repurchase or buy more of a product itself. We also have premiums. Premiums are free or reduced price item like um, pencils, coffee marks, or even six month low interest credit cards. Premiums are given to customers in return for buying a specific products. Contests can also boost sales by rewarding high producing distributors and sales representative with vacation trips to Hawaii or prairies. We also have loyalty programs. Loyalty programs reward frequent buyers for making repeat purchases. AASIA or maybe Malaysia Airlines system must offer special discounted tickets to loyal customers. 
To grab customers' attention in stores, company uses point of sale displays. This is done by displaying certain product at the end of the aisle or near checkout counters to make sure that it is easy to find product or even eliminate competitors from the consideration. In addition to physical goods, POS platforms also provide services, namely information for customers. For business-to-business -business, uh, promotions, industries sponsor trade shows, like this one here. Again, for business-to-business -business promotion, industries sponsor trade shows in which companies rent booths to display and demonstrate product to customers who have a special interest or who are ready to buy. The next one is actually the direct or interactive marketing. Direct or interactive marketing is a one-to-one non-personal selling that tries to get customers to make purchases away from the retail shop and instead they make purchases at home or maybe at work by using mobile devices or while traveling itself. This is actually a fast growing selling method which include non-store retailers like catalogs, telemarketing, home video shopping. They also include direct mail, direct response advertising such as infomercials and also direct response magazine and newspapers app and most importantly they use internet. We also have to look at publicity and also public relations. Publicity is just information about a company, a product or even an event that are transmitted by the general mass media to attract public attention. Although publicity is free, marketers have no control over the content that the media and also writers write. And because normally they are presented in a news format, the customers always perceive this uh, as something that is objective and also credible. Now, in contrast to publicity, public relation is a company influence information that actually wanted to either build, build good relations uh, with the public itself or to deal with unfavorable events. If a company wants to build good relations with the public, normally they would do by publicizing the company's charitable contributions. And uh, if they want to deal with unfavorable event, normally they would make an explanation either by written or even by the video itself done by certain top management or even the founders. Okay, guys, um, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day, everyone.